Hello, welcome to Health Tips with Shalom Health, a channel where we aim to empower you to lead a better and healthier life. A quick question for you today. Have you ever made a new year resolution? And if so, how long did it last? In this video, I'm going to discuss making resolutions for healthier lifestyles, how to go about it and why they fail in most cases. Later in the video, I'll talk about how some of the obstacles to living a healthier lifestyle can be dealt with. If you find value in this video, please comment, subscribe, like, or share it to help spread the word and for the channel to grow. The end of one year and the beginning of a new one is often a time when people reflect on their lives and make resolutions for the future. For example, some people aim to lose weight, start a gym membership, or practice gratitude more. This is not a bad idea in itself, but how long do New Year resolutions last? The odds appear to be stacked against people making New Year resolutions. Many people abandon their goals within a week or two. In one survey in 2019, only 36% of people made it past January, whilst only 9% managed to see their goals through till the end of the year. A survey by Forbes found that the average resolution lasts just 3.74 months. Resolutions are not just for the beginning of a new year. They can be made at any time in the year. People often wonder, why don't I lead a better lifestyle, exercise more, or eat better? A YouGov poll of 2,086 UK adults for the World Cancer Research Fund illustrates the barriers many people face in their desire to adopt and stick to healthy habits. The commonest reason people gave were lack of motivation in 38% of people, feeling too tired, 35%, the cost of food, 30%, lack of time, 26%, work-life balance, 25%, cost of exercising, such as buying a gym membership or equipment, that was in 25% of people, 16% of people lacked confidence, 12% of people did not know where to start, and 24% of people did not have any reason. The next few slides show some of the reasons. Lack of motivation, feeling too tired, increasing cost of living, work-life balance, lack of confidence, not knowing where to start. In most cases, we have a situation where people mean well and wish to lead a healthier lifestyle. They set goals and abandon them down the line as they just cannot seem to stick to the plans. I will discuss ways to try to ensure that a good plans for our health and general lifestyle stick. Most of our daily lives consist of behaviors that we do without thinking about them. They are called habits. Breaking old habits is hard because our brain is used to working in an automatic system, as it were. So when we have to break an old habit and develop a new habit, it may take some time, a few months on average, but can vary from one person to the other. There has to be preparation before you can build new habits. You should not make New Year resolutions at the last minute because it will most likely not work. You're less genuinely motivated if you do it on the spur of the moment. Preparatory steps towards making healthier life choices. The first thing is to set your priorities. What is important to you? Why have you decided to improve your health? There must be a specific, clearly defined reason. For example, is it because of a chronic medical condition or you're not as physically fit as you would wish to be? What do you hope to achieve? What difference will it make to your mental, physical, and social health? You must be specific and write them down so you can refer to them when you need some encouragement. Second reason, make the reason your own. Do it for no other person than you. Don't change your health habits to please someone else. For example, on recommendation from your doctor, it has to be something that you have carefully chosen for yourself. You're more likely to pursue it if it's something that makes you happy or that you're comfortable with doing. That is, it does not cause you any form of pain or discomfort whilst doing it. And identity-based habits. It may be helpful to start thinking about the type of person you want to become. 
rather than the outcome you want to achieve and build your habits from there. This helps you to create habits that stick. For example, if your goal was to lose weight, instead of focusing on losing weight, you should try to focus on becoming a healthy person. Identity-based habits help you to change your self-image from your current self to your desired self. In this case, to become an active, healthy person. Every action you take will then be geared towards that desired identity. Examples of identity-based habits are eating fruits and vegetables to become a healthy person, writing a page every day to become a writer, or exercising regularly to become an athlete. You should also try to project and visualize into the future and see yourself doing the things on your desired list. What you do and what you think affects who you are. This will help you to, to be encouraged when you're feeling discouraged. It will help you to avoid focusing on a particular habit, but instead to focus on who you want to be as a person. For example, if you want to be active and healthy, you just imagine somebody who is active and healthy and think of how that person will be spending their day. For example, going on a walk for one hour every day, eating well, and um, maybe running, doing healthy things like that. And the next slide is an illustration of an identity-based habit. The next thing to do is identify possible obstacles. Before you start, consider and make a list of the things in your current lifestyle that may come in the way of reaching your goals. Is the gym too far from where you live? You could find another gym that is closer or even do the activities in the comfort of your own home. In the last few years, the ability to partake in online gym type activities has increased. If you know that you're likely to succumb to the temptation to buy certain unhealthy foods in the supermarket, you can try to avoid going past those aisles or shopping from the comfort of your own home. In the UK, there is consideration of banning supermarkets from displaying unhealthy food and drinks at checkouts or using them in buy one, get one free offers as part of efforts to tackle obesity. Accountability. It's a good idea to choose for yourself somebody who you could be accountable to. This person can support you by being there to encourage you and advise you if needed. This person could be your spouse, your parents, your friend or family member. If you don't have such a person readily available, you could create a system for yourself whereby you reward yourself for positive behavior and punish yourself for negative behavior. It is a good idea to write them down. Many apps can be used and they are very effective, e.g. my fitness app, Fitbit, and other fitness apps available on iPhones. Others are Couch to 5 app, Active 10, etc. If you are not able to follow through with the plans you have made for any reason, for example, if you have missed going to the gym for a while or you have started eating the kinds of food that are not healthy, don't give up. You can always start again. You're encouraged to regard failure as a normal part of life. Look at the plan that you have written down and start all over again. Release things holding you back. Is your current life in line with your goals? If not, you need to let go of them to create space with your goals and priorities. Consider the things that are not currently working. What habits and relationships are not helpful towards your goals? You need to let go of them to create space for change. For example, if you are someone who tends to overthink on situations and circumstances, try not to think so much about them and engage with other activities. For example, mindfulness activities to take your mind off your intrusive thoughts. Now that we have dealt with the things to consider before making your plans, we are going to talk about how to deal with obstacles because obstacles are sure to arise at some point. And when obstacles arise, that is, you're not getting the results you expected for one reason or the other, it is time to sit down and revise your why, which is, why did you begin this journey at all? Obstacles are only obstacles if you view them as such. They should be seen as opportunities for change. Think of how you can turn the perceived obstacles 
into opportunities. One obstacle is lack of motivation. Is your motivation to please other people? Is it to please yourself? If it is to please yourself, set realistic expectations of yourself. Have a will and won't do list. Reward or punish yourself if you violate any of the items on the list. It is a good idea to constantly review your why. As times and seasons change, your reasons may change too. When your reasons change, embrace it. Don't be afraid to make changes. Lack of time is a factor which a lot of people do experience. You should make a priority list and hopefully make your healthier living activities as a priority. When people have tried once and failed, they may not necessarily want to make it a priority again. If they don't know what to do, it may not be a priority. In this case, they should learn how to go about it and start taking steps towards it. Some people don't just want to change from their present unhealthy habits. They may have a lot on their plate to cope with, or there may be some other reasons, which is understandable, and the desire must be there before any changes can be done. The earlier they can start, the better in the long run. Another tip is to start small and build up. You can start to work for 20 minutes a day, if that is all the time that you have, and then build up as your schedule permits. Habit stacking may also help. This is when you add a small habit to something that you already do. For example, whilst you're taking a walk outside, you could be practicing mindfulness at the same time as paying attention to the sounds, the smell, the color of the things in the environment. Registering this into your brain will help to reduce your stress levels. And the next slide shows this lady taking a walk in nature and um, taking in all the colors, the smells, enjoying it, registering it in her brain, which is good for stress relief. The next factor is lack of support. For some people, the people in their lives may be sabotaging their efforts. This is why it's better to let them know why you're making the changes. They need to be reassured that you care for them. You can try to engage in multitasking. For example, you can combine your relationships with an active lifestyle. For example, if you are having a date night with your partner by going to eat and drink in a restaurant, this can be changed to both of you going on a bicycle ride or just walking briskly together. Some people get overwhelmed or have too much stress. Avoid excess clutter in your life. Make a list of things you value and those you don't value. For example, spending too much time on social media without a valuable purpose may not be a good idea. Information overload. If you're just starting out and you don't know what to do, don't be overwhelmed by the amount of information available out there. Look for where the information overlaps and is consistent with other reputable sources, e.g. eating more fruits and vegetables, moving more, reduction of stress levels. Lack of awareness. Some people are not aware that our thoughts and habits affect our health. Society generally tends to focus on diet, exercise, and weight control, which belong to the physical and nutritional pillars of a healthy lifestyle. There are other pillars of health, as discussed in another video on this channel. Please take some time to look at that particular video. It's titled Pillars of a Healthy Lifestyle, and there are eight of them. Points to note. There must be a period of preparation. Small changes can make a big difference. Start with one change at a time and build from there. Don't have an all or nothing mentality. Don't aim to be perfect. Enjoy the process. Learn and grow with every mistake. Translate your goals into habits and then build better health habits one at a time. Write out a detailed plan. This is very important. And I would say this particular one is the most important to write it down and refer to it and review it as needed, please. And don't forget to celebrate when you succeed, please. Disclaimer, the information on this channel is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. All content on or available through this channel is for general information only. No professional relationship is formed between any member of Shalom Health and yourself 
as a result of getting information from this channel. You're encouraged to confirm any information obtained from and through this channel with other sources and review all information regarding any medical condition or treatment with your physician. If you have found any value in this video, please give it a like or comment on it to give us your thoughts on the ideas discussed and please share with the people in your life who might benefit from this knowledge. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more eye-opening content like this. Stay curious and stay informed until next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye.